Uh, a wonderful win. <laughs> Just joking. joking. Uh, wonderful game. Played our hearts out. I just addressed the team and told them that I love each and every one of them, and coaches included, because they were resilient. They did not give up when they had a multiple, multiple opportunities to give up. They fought to the end. We sustained injuries. Next man up came in and did their thing. Marion played his butt off the thing. He had a buck 96. Uh, who else, who else, who else, who else? Several guys played. Kamani came in and contributed tremendously. Um, did a great job going in. Still had some uh, special teams weren't special. As normal, we got to fix this. We say this every week, but we truly got to fix this one way or the, another. Running game showed its face, and you see how uh, better the offense flowed with the running game. We're still getting out to tardy starts. We got to come out ready to play it. I don't know. I got to fix that myself personally. We can't come out and make a surge and right before halftime, then we start saying, okay, we're in the game. They played wonderfully. The quarterback was uh, resilient. Um, they ran the body. They had hit us with some big play screens and some backside things. But, you know, coaches always say, we didn't do this or we didn't do that. They force you into doing certain things and they force you into making mistakes. But we got to just fix the little issues that we're having. And I don't know if that's age. I don't know if this is new to the systems. But overall, I'm really proud of not only the young men, the coaches, the fan base, the student body, all of you, I'm, I'm truly proud of the way we represented Boulder today. I really am. Let's go. Hi, Dion. How you doing? Good. So, Dion, the throw that Shadour made to Omarion in the end zone on fourth and five, mm -hmm. uh, we just asked him about it, and it's just like another play. Right. Not really impressed with himself. Right. I want to ask you two things. One, when you saw that play, that's a play that is beyond an NFL play. There was no space. Right. He found some place to mm -hmm. get it in. Where does that part of him come from? And do you remember any moments when you were raising him that he started to show that kind of uh, acumen on the field? Well, his nickname in my phone, and you, most of you know this, follows us, is Grown. He's very mature. He's grown. Grown. G-R-O-W-N. He's, he's very mature for his age. He's very uh, confident. He's, he don't flinch. He, he, does nev he never gets flustered. Uh, he's the most psyched quarterback in college football, and you can tell with the way he carry himself. Um, he, he's just a kid that we all knew, and, and a multitude of our fans know, and, and some of you wonderful and brilliant writers know, that if we would have got that ball last, we were going to go down and score. We knew that. We know that. Everybody in here knows that. His teammates knew that. And that's just what he brings to the table. He's unflappable. And uh, he's very wise and, and understanding on the whys and the the calls in, in what he sees out there on the field. He, he, he thinks uh, a multitude of things through, but he's a, he's a dynamic athlete and a, a dynamic young man. I'm proud to be his father and his coach. Yes. Coach Price, I heard an echo from Shador, accountability, accountability. Yes. As an athlete, I understand that. Yes. Um, and that is a true championship, Mark. And congratulations on Amari's performance was incredible. In the locker room, is that a yeah, it, it, not early on, no, not whatsoever. Uh, you got to understand it. You can only hold people accountable when you're doing your job. You can't go right here holding everybody accountable when you're not doing your job. So the more that these young men do their jobs and do it like we ex the expectation that we have of them, then they can hold others accountable. But they're tremendous reluctant. It's only a few guys on this team that consistently you know what you're going to get week in and week out, as well as practice. So once that continues, uh, I didn't think we was going to get that from Mario. I ain't seen that yet. No, I mean, he, 
hadn't practiced well. That's why he hadn't played. But he was forced into action, and he, he showed up and showed out, and uh, we celebrated him after the game because of how he stepped up. And now uh, I'm pretty certain that his confidence is going to soar through the roof, so now we could uh, really call set plays for him and really depend on him a lot more because what he could take the, the pressure off Xavier and Jimmy, that and in the running game as well, that's tremendous. But I'm proud of him. Yes, sir. Coach Prime, even in Jackson State, sometimes your teams got off to a slow start. Jackson State, where we get Jackson State from and all this going on? All this going on, where we get that? But when you all flip the switch, it's almost like a completely different team. Each True. Day. True. Um, how do you all get that at the beginning of the game? So that you can that's, that's game planning, that's scripting, that's, that's going out there understanding what's at hand, and we don't, we don't need to get warmed up. To, to do this, we got to come out smoking and ready to go. Like when we come out of the locker room, we're ready. Um, in between the, the kickoff and the first series and the second series, that that's when we have a little like a days ago type of effort. But that's going to have to come from the coaching staff as well as well as the OCs and the DCs to make sure they put us in the right situation so that we're ready to go and understand the personnel that you're that you have out there on the field and making sure we could call certain things that that they can uh, fulfill. So to speak. Great question. Right here. Yes, sir. I L. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so you talked about how you were really proud of this resilient team. I don't know whether or not you believe in moral victories. Your son. I, I don't. Your son doesn't. I either. don't. No, yeah. I don't. He said he doesn't either. No. Um, but is this at least the second half team? Is that the team that you imagined you would have when you stepped foot on this field? No, no. The team I imagined I would have would play four solid quarters and be really physical and really tough and definitive and just make our mark and leave an uh, impression on not only the opposing team, but the, the coaching staff as well as our fan base. That's what we want to do. We, we, we're, we yet to have an identity. I challenge them all week on, what's our identity? I don't, I don't know who we are. From week to week, I don't know what we're going to do. You know, from practice to practice, I do. But we got to translate that into the games. So we're still searching for our true identity. Was that close to an identity? Was that, that, was that second half performance? Was that close to an identity? We, we, well, we gave up points. We're still giving up points. We, we, we got to stop giving up those type of points and spotting teams. You, know, we, you don't want to do that. We're too vulnerable. But in, in saying that is no excuses whatsoever, but three short, three starters short in the secondary, a tremendous uh, 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 backup uh, right tackle came and did a phenomenal job as well. When Savion went out and we were praying for the big fella because he was in tears and he wanted to fight and uh, keep it going. But I'm like, hey, man, we need you for the long haul. And uh, we're praying for Savion as well. Coach Prime, Joe Rico, my last sports radio, the final word. I thought with the transfer portal, that's all I heard in the offseason, but it was nice to see the freshman class come through with some really big plays throughout right. the game, not only the receiver, but Cormani. You know, I've been up here for practice waiting for him. It was really nice yeah. to see him show out. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Because that's got to be a feather in your cap, you know, you get him taking the field and playing so No, I don't, you know, feather for him to take the field and play. He's supposed to take the darn field and play. We want him to be that dude. So, no, we, we don't give feathers whatsoever. We, we have an expectation of what they should be doing and accomplishing. So, but those two young men today, what they did, they stepped out and uh, kind of separated themselves from their yesterday. Their yesterday was was terrible. And but today they came out and established themselves. We just want them to build on it because now we will establish this expectation of the expectation that we already had for them. I'm proud of them. And with their success as well, you see young guys, I just uh, saw met a, saw a couple recruits in. They can't wait to to get here in the spring and, and get going. I mean, so that entices them to make sure they get their schoolwork so they could graduate early so they could get here and get going. So that's the win as well. Who, who, yes, sir. Brian House, the Daily Camera. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, when you took it last week's game and then the first half of this week, mm -hmm. like things were starting to fall off the rails a little bit. But the way you guys finished, I know it's a loss. Mm -hmm. Is that important for you guys and this team to finish the way you did? Well, it's yeah. always important to finish strong. I'm sorry for cutting you off. I'm just I'm ready to go. Uh, not home, but ready to go with it. It's, it's, it's always important to finish strong in whatever you endeavor to do. Um, you, if, why would you start if you don't want to finish right? And I've always prided myself on finishing strong, not only as a player, but as a coach as well. 
um, in building our team in that aspect. We're well conditioned, we're in shape. We, it's not like we tire down the stretch because usually when people tire, they, they start losing the, the thought process of and they start blowing coverages, uh, missing assignments, offsides. And I think we did a good job in uh, penalties. That's one thing we harp on, penalties, time possession. We want time possession today, but uh, give me that stat on penalties. Where were we penalized? Yeah. Seven for sixty. What were they? Five for thirty-seven. That can't be true. <laughs> Heck, you only have five penalties. Well, they had a couple double penalties one time. We should have took both of them. That would have helped them. <laughs> yeah. That and the pass interference on the sideline was really. Finishes like, is anything? Uh, can I help you with? I said, yeah. That pass interference on the sideline. You can help me with that. <laughs> that was a big call. That was a big call. But they they did a great job. Coach, yes. Your boss, twenty four seven sports. Yes, sir. A lot of Hankerson today. Why was he standing out? Uh, he ran the ball hard. He ran good. He's been consistent um, every game. We try to let everyone touch it to see, you know, how are they going. I think we had uh, maybe four or five tailbacks that had an opportunity to touch the ball today. That's that's a good thing because all of them want to play because all of them deserve to play because they're really really good. But Hankerson stood out. He hit it. And, you know, he had a couple one-on-ones in the secondary. I wish he would have shook him and got out of there. But you want to just push Pauls right there and just throw Dylan in there and, and you know, see if Dylan can wiggle out of it. But um, Hank is uh, resilient, man. He's, he's been doing a good job. You, all these guys came, tried to come in and force him out, and he wouldn't relinquish his position. So I'm proud of him as well as a man. Yes, sir. Coach, you talked about um, how everyone believed that if Shadur got the ball there, or yes. the offense got the ball late, you guys were going to go down and score. I don't know if everyone would have believed that would have been the case in the second quarter. So what does a finish like you guys had do for this team's belief moving forward? Um, it's tremendous belief-wise, but we got to believe no matter what. You know, it can't be just because it's a, a quarter or the second half. Um, we do believe in two. Like, we do. I don't give a darn what down it is or what quarter it is or what time of day it is. We do truly believe in what he's capable of doing with this offense. We just got to make sure we keep him in the right situations and protect him. Because shoot, he's a he's a he, he's a baller. He's a now player. He's a today player that uh, young men want to play with. Receivers are calling from all around the country. Want to play with him as well. So you know, they're encouraging him not to look down the street too far, um, like we all are encouraging him because we understand what's coming. If you can't see what's coming with CU football, you've lost your mind. You just a flat out hater if you can't see what's going on and what's going to transpire over the next several months. Something's wrong with you. Yes, sir. Coach, it could have been so easy for this team to feel sorry for themselves. Yes, sir. Feel, feel folded down 30 7, especially after what happened last week. What do you take away in terms of that light bulb moment that went off for them? And well, we, we challenged them tremendously at halftime to, you know, everybody say they won't. They want the light until they get in the light. Now, when you get in the light, the thing about the light, it, it, it echoes your blemishes. So we challenge them to come out here and, uh, like, I ain't got time to be trying to fire you up and give you the most dynamic speech that I could craft, you know, intellectually, and, and use some true words that I have to look up in my vocabulary and the, 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 the source, the source, how to say that word, Pastor? The source, yes. Um, I ain't got time for that today. I just wanted to come out there. I wanted them to lift me up, you know, motivate me, encourage me. Not that I needed it, but I, I wanted them to flip the script on them because I knew what they had in them. All they had to do is believe. And regardless of the color of the uniforms on the opposing team, they just have to believe. And that's something that they're doing week in and week out. It's growing. Yeah, I guess you guys are raising dogs. Hey. Yeah, if you're raising dogs, I ain't hard to find. Right. Raising cats, I am. Hey. <laughs> Hi, Coach. How you doing? Good, how are you? Excellent. What did you think of Romani's playing today? I don't, I, from the neck of the eye, I think he, he played well. Um, I'm going to have to watch the film to make sure, you know, it is what it is. So I, it's hard. It's, it's hard to say now. Then you go in and watch the film and you don't know. So I want to really reserve uh, that to watching the film, but I'm proud of him for just even stepping up to the challenge to get his butt in there and make a difference. I'm proud of him. I really am. Do you think he's been applying what you've been saying to him? 
You'd be a fool not to, because you're not going to play if you don't. You're going to sit right over there, probably where you're sitting at, and watch. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the kid. I'm not going to change. So somebody's going to have to. Yes, sir. Hi, Coach. Okay. Hi, Coach How you doing? Valerie Wardlock of the Los Angeles Sentinel. Outside of the state of Colorado, you have thousands of people who have embraced your mission here, the team here. Is the team aware of that? And what are your thoughts about oh. all of the love you're receiving? I, I don't know if it's a lot, all love. I don't think it's all love. <laughs> You haven't checked the responses for the coaches that we participate against. But we're excited, truly, with the attention that's warranted to this wonderful, beautiful university. I'm excited and elated um, to be the coach here. I'm excited to really um, talk about the wonderful attributes that we possess. Um, the young men, they don't, they don't see it because they're in it, you know. Oftentimes we could step a, f a foot out of it and we see it from a, another viewpoint and uh, an advantage point, but they don't see it and they're so young. I didn't see it either when I was in college or early in my pro career, but I am happy and thankful that we are a voice of hope, of just desire and want. I think that's the thing that's touching souls around the country that you know, that down and out person, that person that no one believes in, that person that no one desires, that person that stepped over, stepped by, and stepped through, and stepped past, that, that we represent that person. Because no one wants to see what we're doing. Uh, they don't want to see us accomplish what we're doing. And I said, and I will reiterate this, you got to be crazy if you can't see the direction that we're headed. And I'm so happy and thankful to be the head coach of this wonderful university. Thank you. <coughs> yes, sir. We all know how good Caleb Williams is. If he doesn't play that way at that level today, do they win? I don't know. <laughs> uh, he, he, the kid always plays that way. No, I, I haven't seen him play badly. Um, I mean, I think, you know, he had some throws that uh, I'm sure he would have wanted back, but that kid is a, a flat-out bowler, man. He, he is a difference maker. He makes them better. Um, the thought process, even just directing traffic and putting them in the right play calls in the right situation, he does a wonderful job of checking off and, and just changing things and getting the ball out of his hands. Uh, it, was, it was a pleasure for me to, to play against them and their head coach. I mean, that was... Fun. That was fun for me. That really was. Probably didn't look like it from probably the, the shots they probably showed. I don't know what they showed, but that was fun. That was fun. All right, thanks, that, Coach. We good? Excuse me? That, that, that throw, sorry. That throw was fascinating. Excuse me? The throw, Shadur. Oh, the throw. I thought you said dead roll. I think, what is that? <laughs> no, uh, that throw was fascinating. We see this in, as fans. We're like, wow, that's incredible. You don't see throws like that. You and Shadur seem to think, you know, feel like it's normal. Is there anything he does that makes you, you know, impresses you or kind of wild you or shows you out? No, I'm, I'm his dad. Like, I, I have an expectation for him, and I've been seeing this, and he's been built and reared for this his whole life. I mean, you didn't believe. I believe, you know, everybody um, from the previous locations that we played. I mean, the kid has always won. He's always been dominant. He's always been smart and intelligent and concise. He's always been a competitor. He's always lifted the level of uh, competition. And he, he's always given us a chance to succeed in every level. So I could go on and on, but I don't want to sound like the dad, but I'm just really speaking to you as the coach. I, I tried my best not to speak to you as the father, but the kid can flat out play. I know a lot of people doubted him and said I just thrusted him into the starting position. Or what they call it, nepotism or whatever. Uh, all of you should just look in the mirror and slap whatever you see. I'm in on that. You got there late, huh? Thank you.